มุนไลต์นาน Hello everyone, I'm Moonlight Nana, and this is my seventh Medibank Pain p r o t o c o l a l video. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope it can help you start off your first step in your digital art journey. In the previous tutorial video, I showed you how to save your project. We saved it in MDP format so that so that it is easier to pick up where we left off. Now for this Medibank p a i n Pro tutorial video, I will explain about the fill tool and a little basic of the layer window, which is how to add layer. Now let's check out the tools bar. The fill tool, uh, which I will be covering in this video, is the seventh tool from above. I will skip the sixth tool, which is the move tool first. The move tool I will be covering in the next tutorial video. So we we'll learn about the fill tool first. Okay. Um, right. Before you get started with the fill tool, I'll clear the canvas using the very handy eraser eraser lasso tool. Okay, now let's click on the fill tool icon, which is this one. When the fill tool uh, icon, when the fill tool is in selection, the cursor will turn into a square cross. The function of the fill tool is to draw a shape that is already filled with the color you selected. Now let's take a look at its function bar up here. The first item of the fill tool is the shape options. When you click this. A drop-down menu will show you the three options of shapes, namely rectangle, ellipse, and polygon. We'll try out the first shape, rectangle. Okay, so the color is set to red. Now, to use the fill tool, simply click on uh, uh, any point on the canvas and then hold it. Then drag the mouse until you see a thin black line forming a rectangle. You can adjust its width. And its length uh, or height, and also its size. Now, when you're satisfied with the shape of the rectangle, you may release the mouse, and the shape is drawn in the color of your choice. Next, the ellipse tool over here also works similarly. Let's try it out. Now, we've selected the ellipse tool, and then let's click on any point on the canvas. Click and drag. And you may adjust the width and the length of the ellipse, or also the size. When you're satisfied, you may release, and then there you have it, an ellipse. Now the polygon shape is a little different, but let's try it out. To use the polygon, click on any point on the canvas. You don't need to hold it, and after that, keep clicking at the other points that connect to make a shape. You may refer to the thin black lines of how the shape would look like. Okay, when you're satisfied, double click and the polygon shape will be drawn, and that's how you do it. Now we actually already learned how to make shapes using the shape brush tool over here in the previous tutorial video. The process is almost the same with the fill tool. The only difference is that now the whole shape is colored instead of just the lines. Okay, so before we move on to the next item in the function bar of fill tool, I will add a new layer here in the layer window. Now, the reason for adding new layer or layers is so that we can separate a drawing from another drawing. To add a new layer, simply click on the first icon from the left at the bottom of the layer window. When you click this icon, a new layer will appear above the previous layer. As you can see here now, there is a layer two, which is above the initial layer, layer one. Okay, so we have just used the fill tool to draw shapes on this layer. So now we'll draw new shapes in the layer above, which is layer two. Now back to the function bar. The next item here um, cannot be ticked, so we'll skip this. The anti-aliasing item will also skip because it requires its own tutorial video to explain about it. I will cover anti-aliasing in a separate tutorial video in the future. So let's check out this round corners item over here. Okay, the the function of the round corners item is to make the points of the shape rounder. All right. 
uh, it can be used with shapes that have sharp points like the rectangle and polygon. The box beside the round corners item over here is the percentage of how round the points will be. The higher the percentage, the rounder the points. You can click on it to see the options for it in the drop down menu. You may choose any of the options you can or uh, you want or you can also uh, input the number yourself. Okay, let's try out the fill tool with the round corners on. I'll pick the rectangle shape first and then I'll tick the round corners item and percentage is at 60%. This time I'll change the color to blue and on this new layer I'll create the shape using the fill tool. Okay, so as you can see uh, from the thin black lines, the points of the rectangle is rounder than before, right? Now I'll release the mouse and it is even more obvious that the points are rounded in, compa uh, in comparison to the red square over here or rectangle. So then let's draw another rectangle but with a higher percentage. Now I'll set it to um, 80% and we'll see how even more rounder the points can be. Ah, okay. So you'd see that the points are rounder than the 60% one. Okay, let's try the round corners for polygon this time. And this time I also set the percentage to 55%. Um, and let's draw a polygon right over here. Now as you can see, the polygons um, supposedly sharp points is now a little bit rounded based on the percentage of the round corners. Alright, so there you have it, the round corners from the fill tool. Okay, round corners item don't work on eclipses because the eclipse shape is already round. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now, the next item in the function tool is the select from center. When we create a shape with this item on, the shape will form from the center of the clicked point. Um, it is a little different from before where the shape is formed from the corner of the click point. So let's try this out on a new layer. I'll untick these round corners and I'll uh, tick the select from center so you see a demo and this time I go for green color hmm okay now remember that the shape will form from the center of the click point so you gotta think of the space it will cover when you click and drag so then I'll click and drag at this point okay now pay attention that the shape is forming um, I'm sorry, not this. It's the rectangle. Okay, now I click and drag over here. Now you'll see that the shape has formed from the center of the initial clicked point. Okay, I can still adjust its height and its width and its um, size, but the square or the thin black lines is forming best on the center of where I clicked and dragged. Now I release it. Alright. So, um, the same would go when you use the, or when you select the eclipse shape. Now, the eclipse shape is selected and then I pick this point over here. Uh, this will be the center point and then I'll create the shape like so. I can still um, adjust its uh, height or the width and its size but it still is formed from the center from where I click and then I release okay now it's all done okay so that's about it the only difference with the select from center item with the usual way we use the usual one is that the shapes forms from the corner 
and this one forms from the center so it's up to you whichever settings you prefer but using the select from center on a polygon has no effect okay so it still looks the way like that it on uh, select from center only works on rectangle and eclipses okay so are you keeping up we've still got two more function item to cover for the fill tool right now let's take a look at the constraint proportions item over here by ticking this constraint proportions the shape created will expand proportionally in width and height let me demonstrate it in a new layer again um, this time I'll pick the color black and then untick this we go for the first shape which is rectangle and now I'll show you a demo okay I'll click on over here and then you'll see that it will expand equally oh wait I haven't clicked on it constraint proportion okay so now you'd see that this uh, the rectangle and its side will expand proportionally to each other they will always be equal and thus it will create a perfect square no matter how much I try to move the mouse and drag it I cannot change the width and the height to different from its sides but I can change I can determine the size so this is what it means to have it constrained proportions the same goes for eclipses so for example I put the eclipse here now the eclipse will always turn into a perfect circle because I cannot um, custom adjust its width and its height and then I release now as for the eclipse the eclipse uh, I mean sorry the polygon the polygon uh, is not affected with the constraint proportions item over here you can always make a polygon without having uh, without the sides having to have the same uh, measurement is it the same length okay so then uh, if you are clear on this let's go for the final item in the function bar, uh, function bar over here which is the opacity let me switch this, tick this off okay now the opacity here mean will how do i say now the lesser the opacity the more see-through the shape will be that is the simplest way to explain it now let me demonstrate it straight away so you'd see what i'm trying to say now let's pick yellow this time yellowish okay anyway and i'll do it on a new layer now for the rectangle i'll first draw the rectangle in opacity at 100 percent so i'll draw one over here so this is the rectangle at 100 percent um, opacity now let's try for eclipse but this time i lower the opacity down to 50 percent uh, somewhere like that okay and then i make i'll create a shape over here now as you can see the eclipse uh, is starting to um, how do i say to become a see-through okay now what happens when I use for the polygon then I lower it down to 25% and then it is even more see-through almost transparent at 25% opacity for the polygon shape now that is what it means to change the opacity of the fill tool this is a solid um, a solid color this is one this one is at 50% opacity and this one is at 25% opacity all right so it's very simple to understand the opacity I'll keep it back at 100% now the reset function at the end over here it doesn't do anything like so so let's just leave it at that and there you have it the fill tool and its function bar items 
Okay, we've already covered the seventh tool of the tools bar collection and I also showed you how to add a new layer in the layer window. Now you can apply the um, the fill tool to your digital drawing with previous tools to continue um, with your practice in creating art. Now with practice, you can become better in using and applying all the tools that we've covered so far in the Medibank Paint Pro tutorial videos. As for the sixth toolbar uh, tool in the toolbar which is the move tool i will cover it in the next video okay so that's it for today thank you for watching this tutorial video of medibank paint pro please like this video and subscribe to moonlight nana channel or follow me on facebook together we help each other out in our art journey have a blessed day ahead everyone